interesting going on right now in the way that people think about architectures for applications. Um, sitting here looking out at buildings in San Francisco, and if you tried to build a building um, like one of these in San Francisco, you know, 40 stories tall, you would never try to do that with wood. Right? People built new materials that made it possible to build these architectures. Uh, and what we're seeing right now is there's this idea of cloud computing and people are trying to build 30-story buildings using operating systems that were designed to be a single operating system on your desktop. Right? Windows, that's what it was for. Linux, that's what it was for. Uh, and so you can't build those architectures. And so as we were thinking about um, you know, how to make cloud computing be successful, how to build these architectures that would really scale, really be high performance, we realized we had to take a different approach. Uh, and so we're not using virtual machines. Uh, we're really building all of the materials that people need to build these great, large, performant architectures. Um, it starts at the base level where we took an operating system that was already available, one that Sun had put a ton of effort in um, called Solaris. We hardened that kernel, we made it a little bit more performant, uh, and began to use that kernel as the key for building a virtual environment for applications. Um, so people are building their applications using modern technologies, Java, PHP, Rails, uh, as opposed to starting at the operating system level. Um, so we pushed them up the stack in the same way that to build one of these buildings, you gave them steel and girders and manufactured those core components. Um, on that operating system, you get a smart machine, um, which is really an environment optimized for an application. Um, the operating system underneath it, which we provide, gives you speed, gives you flexibility, and makes it possible for you to focus on your application and your code. And what's interesting in building these buildings is you have girders and steel and these pieces, but getting them to work together is the challenging part. That's really what architecture is. Uh, and so for us, the core of our IP, the thing that's really important about how, how Joyent thinks about the world, uh, is what we call the smart data center. Uh, and that's realizing that one box and another box and another box and another box, that's suburban sprawl, right? That's not an architecture. Uh, and so the smart data center allows you to tie these things together. It allows you to automate smart machines, create them, delete them, spin them up, spin them down, um, build those really sophisticated applications. Uh, and more than that, it allows you to connect them together in ways that are interesting. Um, so giving the ability to modify the underlying network infrastructure, create VLANs, um, do rerouting of traffic, all those types of things that normally someone would have to walk into your data center, manipulate it, and then walk back out. And so you couldn't dynamically grow your application or change your application. In the long run, that's not going to be enough, right? In the long run, uh, people just want to be able to describe an application and have it work. Uh, they don't want to have to do all the infrastructure. Uh, as somebody who, you know, my background was really in software development, and my worst experiences in computing are those days when I had to physically interact with the machine. Um, in the long run, we expect that what people want to be able to do is just write code and have it all work. Uh, and so you go one layer even further up the stack, you know, on top of smart machines running in the smart data center, and we'll work on the smart platform, which will give JavaScript developers the ability to just describe an application. Uh, and all that infrastructure stuff, all the headaches associated with infrastructure, it just goes away. Um, we do that for you. You, know, you need more databases? Great. Uh, you need more performance? Okay. Uh, it just happens. Uh, and as much as I never believed the fiction of it just happens, um, it just does. Uh, that's really what we're striving for. Uh, and that's what we're seeing right now with the people who are using it in the beta. So uh, that's what we're trying to do, is make it possible for people to build these architectures. Uh, in order to do that, we had to start with new materials, because you just can't do it with the stuff that people have been using for 15 or 20 years. Uh, and so that's, that's what we're all about at Joint. If you think about a traditional, no virtualization at all environment, you buy a piece of hardware, you put an operating system on it, you put an application on top of it. Uh, in the virtual machine world, you buy a piece of hardware, you put a hypervisor or some kind of virtualization layer, and then that breaks that box into five, six, eight, ten on a high-end machine, maybe 50 uh, virtual machines. Inside of each of those virtual machines, you have an operating system, and then you have some application code. So you'll have 10, 20 in a high-end environment, right? the kind of thing that's running on one of the big cloud providers, you'll have 50 instances of an operating system running on that piece of hardware. Uh, all of that's just overhead. 
Uh, in our environment, we have an operating system that provides virtualization for applications. So you have hardware and OS, and then you have virtual, uh, virtual spaces, smart machines, uh, that are just application code. Uh, and so you have one instance of the operating system running, being shared by all the applications that are on there. And so you know, 80, 90, 95 percent, depending on how big those virtual machines of, of that space, is actually going to be used just for applications. Uh, and so the efficiency that we get, um, a lot of times 2, 3, 4x uh, what you'll get in other environments.